get to Joe before a hard break. Joe in Howell, New Jersey on FJS. WFJS, you're on the air. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. How are you? Great. Doing well, Joe. So uh, my question is, I am one of the young people who uh, used to consider myself Christian, and I now self-identify as atheist. Okay. Uh, and I just want to know, uh, why should I believe that a God exists? All right. Well, uh, let me ask. Can I start off by asking you a question, Joe? Um, Absolutely. What What are some reasons that you would give why God doesn't exist? What And so, what was it that sort of led you to deny and stop acknowledging God's existence and embrace atheism? One, so give me maybe first, give me maybe one reason, and then we can uh, start the dialogue. So um, the the concept of God that I had okay. uh, didn't really make much sense. And, and I, I what understand concept that, is that? Um, I I had this idea of uh, God as um, I, the the idea I had was of a God that could do literally anything, even including things that were logically impossible. Okay. Things that, that are uh, you know against. Uh, you know some of the classical ideas uh, of theology. Okay. Um, so when I when I came to that, I realized that uh, that my conception of God didn't really make sense. So okay. I, I tried to look at things, and and I've come to the place where I don't even know what I mean by the word. I don't God. know what God yeah. is supposed to mean. Yeah. Well, let me take a stab at that, Joe. Well, first of all, you know, if what you just mentioned there would be something that. As Christian theists, we would actually disagree, we would agree with you on in rejecting a certain idea of God. You mentioned how you know this understanding of God that you had that you had is that God could do anything, even uh, logical contradictions, like make a square or circle or something. But that would be an idea of God that we would reject. The omnipotence of God does not involve the power to do logically contradictory things. The omnipotence of God applies to all things that are logically possible, all things that can have being. You can't have a square circle. It's a logical contradiction. Consequently, God can't make it. Nor can God even command individuals or humans to do things that would violate their human nature. So when we're talking about morality, God could not command a human being to uh, to take the life. Uh, God could not command a human being to torture babies for fun, let's say. Uh, God could not command a human being to violate the natural ends of their human sexuality. And so there are certain things God can't do, namely those things that would contradict his wisdom or contradict his nature. So your idea of God that you had that you rejected, at least in that respect, we would agree with you, Joe. So I would encourage you, Joe, I don't know if we're coming up on a break or not, Patrick, but Joe, there's, there's great resources out there, brother, for you to take a look at that I think you'll find that your old conception of God is, is not consistent with the classical understanding of God. Joe. And on the other side of the break, we'll give yeah. you those resources. Joe in uh, Howell, New Jersey. Still there, my friend? Yep, I'm still here. Okay, very good. So just for folks who just joined us, Joe, you, you used to be a Christian. You now uh, identify as an atheist. And before we took our pause here, Carla was, was uh, dialoguing on your definition of God. And maybe, maybe it, you're open to hearing a reboot of what God's actual nature is. Uh, I just want to make sure we keep the through line going, Carlo. Yeah, Joe, would you be interested in me sharing a couple of resources with you that you might want to take a look at? Absolutely. I, I like I said, I, okay. I just don't even understand sure. what what God is supposed to mean. So right. it, it, if we could start there, that would be. Yeah. Well, to to define God, Joe, um, you know the the understanding of God is that He is, you know, in philosophy, this is kind of abstract, but He is. Being itself, he is absolute existence. He is infinite, unlimited being. Okay, now, I know that's a mouthful, but we can philosophically demonstrate that God is not a being among many other beings, like Patrick is one human among other humans or one being among other beings. God is supreme, infinite, unlimited being itself. He is what we call in philosophy the uncaused cause. So he is reality itself, 
that is existence and does not derive existence from anything else outside of himself because he has existence within his very own nature. So like you and me, Joe, we, we don't have existence by nature. We're called possible beings. We came into existence. We can, uh, we, our, our existence is not necessary. God is the absolutely necessary being. Now, from that, Joe, we're able in philosophy to arrive at all of these different attributes of what infinite, unlimited being would be. We can arrive at such a reality being immaterial, couldn't be matter, couldn't be cons constitutive of matter, uh, material parts. It would have to be absolutely simple. It would have to be intelligent, so it would have intellect, it would have volition or will, which is our personal attributes, and all of the other divine attributes, such as omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence, etc. Now, obviously, we don't have time, Joe, to go into all of that, but I'm going to share with you a couple of resources that you can look into to be to, in, that will show you how in our classical Catholic tradition, we arrive at who and what God is, at least from the philosophical perspective. The first book I want to recommend to you, Joe, is our own Trent Horn's book, A Answering Atheism. Okay, so he shows why atheism is incoherent and not an adequate explanation of reality, of the universe, and of human experience. And he gives, I think, four or five arguments for God's existence. So that's the first one, Answering Atheism. Now, Joe, I'm going to recommend uh, a couple of more books. Number one is Aquinas for Beginners by Dr. Edward Fazer. And then the second one is New Proofs for the Existence of God by Father Robert Spitzer. It's a little heavy lifting. It is a heavy lift. It is a heavy lift, Joe. It's something that you have to work through. But the beauty of those works, especially Fazer's and uh, Father Spitzer's work is that it shows you the in-depth intellectual, the intellectual depth of our understanding of God. Now, Trent is deep as well, but the way Trent wrote it so beautifully is that it's very palatable for even someone who doesn't have a background in philosophy. So, Joe, if you didn't get all of those resources down now, I would encourage you to listen to the uh, podcast, and then maybe you'll be able to get those resources. How's that, Thank Joe? Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for calling, count. Joe. God bless you. And count on our prayers, Joe. I'm glad you got on the air.